Good evening everyone, James Graves here and welcome to the first ever tutorial of my channel. My goal here is to show you the value of the things around you by teaching you some tips and tricks on how to create, improve and repair anything and everything. So on tonight's episode I'm going to show you a little trick that I use on pretty much all my wood based projects, whether it be shelving, coffee tables, worktops, anything like that. And this just gives it a really nice rustic yet slightly modern look. And you can use this on any type of wood, whether it be pallet wood that you want to add even more character to, or even if you've got cheap, nasty new timber, you can actually make this look really nice with just a few simple tools and not very much time. So the first thing you're going to need is something to burn the wood. This is what really brings out the grain and gives it a really nice, dark, rustic look. So here I've got a yellow map gas bottle. You can get blue ones as well, which are propane. They're a bit cheaper but they only burn just over half as hot, so you probably end up using more gas to get the job done, so I recommend getting map gas. It just works out better value in the end, and it makes it easier. Alternatively, you might already have a large propane tank at home, which you use for your gas barbecue or for an outside heater, in which case you can actually use that if you get the appropriate attachment. I will try and link something in the description below that you could use for that. So the next thing you're gonna need is some kind of wood dye or stain, and this is really gonna depend on how dark you want that finished wood to look. I've got a nice light oak here, but if you're looking for a more rustic kind of barn door look, you might want to go something much darker than that. I'd recommend getting a few and just trying them out and seeing which one suits your look the best. On top of that, you're going to want some kind of wood oil. I've got Danish oil here, but you could also use linseed or anything else that's designed for wood. What this is going to do, it's going to seal in the wood, protect your finish, but also just bring out the grain just that little bit more at the end. I prefer oils over varnishes because then I give a nice natural look as opposed to that sort of cheap shiny really high gloss sheen that you get with a varnish which has its place but for what we're doing here much before using wood oil now you're going to need something to apply your stain and your oil some people like to use a paintbrush it's a good way of doing it but personally i prefer to use an old rag and finally cup of tea now quick disclaimer this is fire, this is extremely hot fire, okay? This burns at 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit. That's enough to melt most metals. So you need to be really careful when you're using this. But I recommend using it in a well-ventilated area, outside if you can, on a surface that's non-combustible. So do it on your patio or on a concrete surface that isn't gonna catch fire. On your hand that's holding the wood, I'd recommend using a leather welding glove. They're quite cheap, I'll link one in the description as well, and they're always good to have. Now for demonstration purposes, I'm doing this in my workshop on a wooden surface and I left my welding gloves somewhere else. But please do listen to that advice. That's what I would do if I'm doing lots of this at a time, okay? I'm only showing you on a small piece here and I've done this many times before, but please do listen to that advice. I can't be responsible for any harm that you do cause yourself using one of these. Now that's out of the way, let's show you how this is done. Now burning wood is a very similar process to how you would spray paint something, okay? So you wanna be working even speed all the way across the wood and you want to start off of the end and end off of the end. All right, I'm not going to do that because I'm holding this here, but you want to slowly and steadily go across the wood. So start your fire. Now you can see straight away just how much that's brought out the grain on this wood compared to the bit that I haven't touched. You can see the amount of character you get from this and people pay a lot of money for old reclaimed wood to get this kind of effect and in reality you can get cheap wood and you can make it look nice and rustic with just a few seconds now if you're looking for something a bit lighter you want to move that torch faster than i was and you won't get quite as much of this burning effect if you want it darker i'd recommend going in layers just like you would be with spray paint you don't want to just lather it all on at once you want to go over in passes just like I did there just do that again and you'll get a much darker look so next thing is we're going to want our wood dye this is what's going to get it to the color that we want our wood to look so I've got a very light dye you're probably not going to see a whole lot of difference from me using this but if you want a nice dark wood you could use a nice dark dye so I say I prefer to use an old rag I'm just gonna hit a bit on my rag and we're just gonna rub that into the grain. Now you can see straight away that that's darkened it just a little bit. 
and brought a really nice contrasty look to the wood and just given it a much more character again on the areas that weren't burnt and just really brings out that grain and makes it look like a high quality wood when in reality it isn't. So now you've got your desired finish and colour and you're happy with it. Now we just want to let that die set. The tin says six to eight hours recoat. In reality, if you're on a rush job, you can actually go straight in with the oil. You don't need to leave it. Eventually they will set together. But if you've got the time, I'd recommend being patient and just coming back to this later on in the day or tomorrow. But for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna coat this with oil now. So the procedure for the oil is very much the same as the dye. All we're gonna do is get our wood. I'm gonna pour a bit of the oil out properly this time. Just find a little container. I've just got the top of a spray paint can. A little bit of oil, you really don't need much at all. I'm gonna get our brush. And I'm just gonna work in that oil exactly the same way. You don't want this too thick, but you ideally want it a little bit thicker than your stain. I think my camera timed out there. Um, as opposed to the stain, you are gonna want to let this set. The tin says touch dry in two hours, but I personally recommend leaving this for at least 24 hours before you start putting anything on it, um, just to make sure that it's really nice and set and it's gone hard. And that's it. You can see how simple that process was. In reality, you can do a piece of wood like this in about five minutes um, if you skip the drying time on the die. And you can see how much better that finishes is compared to this wood here. And there you have it, really quick, really simple and really easy. And you can see the great results you get from just a few basic tools that don't really cost very much. And yet they add so much value to the wood that you're using. And this is what it's all about on this channel is teaching you to add value with just a little bit of your time and some basic tools. Now, whether you're a professional or a DIYer, I definitely recommend investing in these things if you're gonna be doing woodwork. It's just a few simple tools and you can get a really nice result. These gas bottles last for ages. I've done hundreds of pieces of wood with them and I've used them for soldering, melting metals and all sorts of things. So they're really useful to have. The top you never need to replace, you just replace the bottle. Again, get a range of stains, try different colors that you like, get the desired effect that you want and oils, whichever one you prefer, any of them will do a good job. I like Danish oil or linseed oil. Now, just to show you that you really can use this on any type of wood, whether it's new or reclaimed, I've got a couple of samples. Obviously, you've seen this already, the effect that you get there with the 4B2, but you can also use this on reclaimed pallet wood. Now, pallet wood is really in trend right now, and you can see why. The amount of character you start off with is incredible, but when you apply this effect, you get such an amazing finish and wood that you can really use anywhere and I use this all throughout my house. If you're more into panelling, this is quite common in bathrooms and outhouses and it looks cheap and nasty when you get it. If you apply this effect, it just gives it so much more character and this stuff is incredibly cheap. You can panel a whole room with this for not very much and if you apply this effect, that's a really, really nice characterful wall you're gonna get there. Now I really hope you guys have learned something from this video and that you've enjoyed it. As I said, my goal is to just show you the value in the things around you and teaching you ways to improve them using just a little bit of time and some basic tools. Now this was my first ever tutorial, so if you found some value in it, I'd really appreciate it if you could please drop it a like. Whether you liked it or not, please put it in the comments below. Tell me what you did like, what you didn't, and what else you'd like to see. So if you liked this video and you want to see more of this kind of content in finding the value of the things around you and escaping that kind of throwaway society, then please do subscribe. I've got a long list of ideas. It's just gonna be down to how quickly I can make these videos. But there's so many things that I've learned and I've taught myself over the years that I'm really keen to get out there and teach to you guys. So please do subscribe, follow along, drop me a comment and just tell me what you wanna see, what you liked about this, anything that I can prove on for the next video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.